Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Niklas Huschenbeet and welcome to the second premium coaching. My second time this week, but I received a lot of games and I'm looking forward to do some more coaching, some more analysis. And in general, I'm thinking about, well, maybe even hosting this show twice a week, but will depend on my other duties such as live commentary. But in general, the usual slot will be, and I'll just say it in the beginning and I'll also say it later, it will be Fridays at 5 p.m. I know today we're doing 6 p.m. Central European time, but in the future we're going to do 5 p.m. because I don't want to work that late. <laughs> Quite simple. So let's go to the first game I have for you guys today. And that is the game Howard... Vyham against Leonard, Leonard Wu um, and you notice I'm hesitating I probably should check real quick whether you guys can hear and see me so just let me know in the chat real quick if you can understand me because well that's important for me to know and then we're ready to go Okay, it looks like people can understand me because Tweedle, Tweedledee is saying that 5 p.m. is better for his evening activity. So let's get started here with Howard and I'm gonna go through the game. And this is going to be a one and a half hour show once again. And I'm hoping to get to as many games as possible. So let's see what's happening here. Howard is saying, I'm white and even though I won, I'm concerned about my play because potentially black gets a nice center. As of now, it doesn't look like. Uh, right now, you're having a nice center, you're having a space advantage. So this is looking pretty comfortable. So let's go through the game, see what happened here. Ship d7. Yeah, here, I don't think you need to take on e6. This is kind of uh, giving away some of your space advantage. And if there's no necessity to take on e6, then why do it? Just play, if you want to play a4 like you did in the move after, just play it right away. You can play a4 here, or you can take on d7, play knight f3, many choice. But if there's no need to take on e6 and you don't get any immediate benefit, don't do it. So take six, a4, a6, bishop retreats. Knight f3, knight a5, bishop a2, h6. And now e5 is beautiful, very nice move. Um, breaking through in the center, destroying the black pawn structure. And that leaves you in a great spot here. Queen c7. Knight g6, this looks great. Bishop f4, queen c6. Um, castle, queenside castle. Yeah, this is a fantastic position for you, certainly. Now you took on f8 and follow up with queen d6, which is winning a pawn, so I can't really argue with that. Uh, especially Jan wouldn't argue with that logic. But you could have also played something else because really black is tied down. Uh, the bishop cannot move right now, so you could just move the queen, for example, to e2 and. Um, at first this looks like if it is allowing bishop d6, but here either bishop takes d6 followed by rook ad1 or even rook ad1 immediately is putting black in a really awkward position. Let's put it simply just lost for black. So this is no good. Um, okay, so you took an f8. I'm just, I just want to highlight that sometimes um, well, you can also keep the, the tension here. You don't need to exchange a passive piece on f8 against one of your good pieces on on um, g6. All right, let's see what happened. But you had something specific in mind, certainly. So that makes sense. Um, queen d6, black has to exchange. 
takes takes and now you win this pawn and well this looks like a pretty effortless game bishop takes e6 nice little tactic you spotted here and your opponent had to give up the exchange and i guess that's it right you can zip through the last moves rather quickly nice play Nothing really I could say about this game, honestly, because that was a pretty effortless game, pretty clear win for you. So, um, quick analysis. <laughs> yeah, there was not much to say here, really. Um, you're asking if your, op your opponent opening play was okay. Like I said, the only thing that I noticed uh, was to don't take on e6 if you don't need to. There's any immediate benefit to it, right? That's the only thing I noticed. But apart from that, clear win. All right, thanks for sending it in. And I hope, even though there was not much, I didn't spot many mistakes, I hope that was still useful advice for you. All right, let's go to the next game. Um, it's Serrano333 and he sent in two games but I'm just going to look at one of them because I got so many ga games guys <laughs> I cannot possibly look at them all oh no I already showed the final position all right so Serrano333 was playing with the black pieces so let's turn the boat around and the settings down here and yeah, I think I'm going to do this during the show, sometimes point out some features because really this feature, all of you guys that are watching, you can also use it uh, to a certain degree. Well, this broadcast feature, not everybody can use just premium members, but in general, this analysis feature, every registered user can use on Chess24 and I think even unregistered users. So this is a great tool, guys, and um, I'll point some things out on the way. So let's go through the game of Serrano. All right, bishop c5. This is, of course, not the main Royal Lopez variation to Black's choice are knight f6 and a6, of course. But bishop c5 is a move actually I played in my youth. And it's possible. It's not considered to be, well, the best, obviously. But it's possible. Castle. Knight f6. I think... Well, looks like... Uh -huh. Knight takes e5 is winning a pawn here for black. So probably you should have defended this, this pawn on, on e5. Um, in one way or the other. Queen f6 looks very sensible to me. Or bishop g4. I mean, several choices certainly. And um, you could even play in the style of the, the Spanish exchange variation because really instead of playing a6, you play bishop c5. And that's certainly a useful move. So many choices here, but I think knight f6 really allows why to just take on e5 because um, if the knight takes e4, you would run to queen e2 and things of that nature, which doesn't look pleasant. Some problems here with the king, and you can see I'm using all these features here, pointing it out on the e-file, some trouble. But, yeah, just protect this pawn. Because here you castled now, but this pawn is gone for good, right? This is a center pawn, this is an important pawn, so you don't just want to give it up. Keep your pawns. I think Jan would also support that statement. Rook e8, knight f3. Okay, you do the best you can, of course, play actively, but losing the center pawn, really the most important pawn, among the most important pawns on the board, besides the pawns in front of your king, is not optimal. Bishop g5. Okay, and white is helping you here to get back into the game, giving you the bishop pair for free. And now, 
you're playing queen g6 and you're asking, should I be attacking this quickly? Well, there is no attack right now. And it also doesn't look like you're going to build up anything anytime soon. Honestly, white is a very solid position, very stable. Um, not really anything to do, honestly, uh, against the white king. So there is, this shouldn't be an option right here to attack. In order to attack, you need to have weaknesses or you need to have a lot of pieces concentrated against the white king. Um, white doesn't have any weaknesses in his pawn structure in front of the king. It's all intact. And you also don't have that many pieces to attack. Um, besides this, usually one can initiate an attack by pushing one's pawns, but certainly you don't want to do this either because that would leave your king quite vulnerable and uh, would also take a long time and doesn't really make sense. So you're not aiming for an, an attack here. Something you could aim for is win back the pawn. Um, by the way, by pressing this, this button here, the trash can or the bin as in British English, we can delete all the highlights at once. So they're not distracting us. And now we can grab this pawn on B2. Of course, one has to reckon with rook b1, but grab another pawn, and if white takes this one, now you can lock the rook in on b6, uh, on b7, and um, have some hopes to win with bishop c8 or queen a6. Of course, this line continues, knight c4, but ideas like this are in a position, and either way, you have won back the pawn already, so this would have been a good option. All right. So let's see how it continues. Queen g6, knight c4. Bishop d6, bishop h3 doesn't really do much apparently, but certainly move we can keep an eye on, right? This is always a typical idea to pin the, the G pawn and create a mating threat, obviously, but white has ways to cope with this, for example, knight e1 or even knight h4. But I think I like knight e1 better. And just nothing happening here. White position is very solid, like I said. Okay, let's keep going. I wouldn't, don't, don't give up a bishop. I'm a big fan of the bishop here. And especially if you're just a pawn down for not a lot of compensation, then you want to keep what you have. And the bishop pair is an asset here. So don't just offer your bishop for an exchange with bishop d6. You can, for example, play a move like rook d8, bring the last rook into play, suddenly already introducing ideas like rook takes e4. And then you just have to sit and wait and see what happens. Of course, you should probably watch out for knight e5, which I didn't consider a moment ago. Um, so maybe not rook d8 because with knight e5 once again white would be able to grab one of your um, bishops but maybe a move like queen h5. So keep your bishops, that's important. Knight e3, keeping the bishop, good job. Queen f6 and now look at that. White is helping you. White is opening up the weaknesses. So that means now you can more so think about an attack against the white king. C3 and H5 and you're asking, is this a good move to get G5 out of wood? Yes, this is a great move. You gotta exploit these weaknesses on the king side and Put up, put up some pressure. Of course, white can cope with this, for sure, by, for example, moving this knight out of the way. But still, you want to open up files, and this is the right way to do it, definitely. Still, I'm still waiting for you to bring this rook into play, though. Uh, this would have been also a very sensible move. Just rook 88, see what's going on here, especially after white played c3, target this pawn on d3. We're going to mark it red here. Um, this was also an option. Always get all your pieces into action. This is a very common rule of thumb. If you have one piece inactive, not doing anything, 
Bring it in. Why not? Play with all your pieces. Very important. All right, so h5. And now let's keep going. g5, well, this is helpful, of course, just allowing you to grab this on h3 and suddenly, of course, you have won the pawn back plus a free attack. This is great. And bishop takes e4, look at that, very nice. I like that a lot. Bishop takes e4. Nice sacrifice. Can white defend this themselves at this point? No. No. I don't think so. No, there's no hope. You have the bishops both pointing in the direction of the white king. Black is up a pawn already. This is over. Rook takes e4. The rook comes into play. And that's it. Knight g2, rook g4. Nicely done. Uh, if this knight moves, this checkmate on h2. So. This checkman. All right. So what can I say? Don't give away your pawn in the in the opening, of course. But apart from that, I think you did a good job. And um, keep the bishops. That's another thing to take away. All right. Let's go to the next game. And I'm getting a question in the chat. If it worked out with my masters in Berlin, haven't heard back yet. So. I think I still have to wait until the end of July, unfortunately. I thought it was going to be the beginning of July, but I was wrong. All right, let's go to a game by Mohamed Mudassir. This is still the old game, and there it is. All right, and Muda Mohamed says, Hi, sir, I am white. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. That's always important, so I'm not analyzing for the wrong person because we really only want to focus here on the player who sent in the game. This is the coaching. We're not doing the classical game analysis where we're looking at both sides. We're just looking at the side who sent it in, right? So that's important to know. Let's go through the opening and I also want to show you guys another feature. I don't know how well I can do it, but let me just give you a glimpse. I think that's pretty new, but as we're moving along in the game on the bottom there are all the games showing in this position and it's just it just keeps going as we're moving through so it's pretty nice because we can always evaluate are the moves that we're looking at here or whenever we're doing such an analysis if we're anal analyzing our own games are those moves the most played or what are the most played moves how do they compare are we following opening theory here or are we playing some absolute novelty, some sideline? So that's good stuff and I think it's a pretty new feature. In general, there's a lot of good stuff here in this analysis tool. All right, so what, what do we have here? We have the accelerate, accelerate Dragon. Let's go through the moves a little bit quicker. All right. Let's actually let me use this tool because I've, I'm pretty sure that Bishop B3 is the right way to go here. So let me use this tool and uh, check this out real quick. Actually, we're gonna go, I think it makes the most sense if we go to the opening explorer. So you guys can also see what's going on. And yes, bishop b3 is the most played move. And there's a reason to it. Um, you want to get the bishop out of the way because after castle, what was played here, now this move knight takes e4 is possible. And um, that's a problem with not playing bishop b3. And how nice is this? We see all the moves, all possible moves, and we see the percentages. We see how strong the players are. That's pretty neat. And here black's just equalizing effortlessly. So this is uh, a common thing in the opening you want to avoid. Um, so next time, make sure you know exactly the moves here in this particular line. Uh, just retreat with the bishop to b3. All right, let's keep going. Your opponent missed this. Knight takes e4. So actually, why not go back into opening explorer and see if you, you played the main move here, h3. Good job. Uh, stopping knight g4. And now what was played? Bishop d7.
and bishop b3. And now your opponent played knight a5, which is a rarer move. All right, let's not get caught up too much with the opening explorer, but like I said, guys, I want to show you some features here. Some people are not even aware of all the stuff going on here. Here's the info, here's the opening. Oh, hold on, you can't even see this. Let me move myself. No, no, I, I can't do this. <laughs> let's not get too fancy, but all this stuff is down here. Um, Actually, let's do like, no, this doesn't, hold on. Hold on guys, we'll be right back. Or maybe not. No, there we are, I told you guys, right back. I uh, just want to show you it was hidden. Down here is the opening explorer, there's info. Well, info maybe not that interesting right now, but for some people that might be good stuff to know in case you wanna do your own analysis session or your coaching session, your private coaching session with somebody at some point, this is important stuff to know. Here you can chat with the people you have invited to your session. So let's return back. Let me put my picture on again. And let's continue with the analysis. All right. So rookie one. Takes, takes, a6, and you're asking, what should be my plan here? I thought to play queen d3, rook d1, and then e5 after f4. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I think certainly moving a queen to d3 or d2 makes a lot of sense, and putting, a, putting pressure on the center. Yeah, I like queen d3. I like your plan here. Queen d3, rook d1, f4. Makes sense. And then it depends what black does. But sometimes you could play with e5 and sometimes you have other options. But I would use the a1 rook. And this is the... the oh, this is always the question. I, I, I was looking for some fancy word like the eternal question let's put it like that the, the eternal question which rook to move to a specific square and you have two choices but oftentimes only one is the right one uh, here I think I would move the other rook and the way I try to solve it is just try to figure out which rook is doing less work and in this case this rook on a1 is doing less it's just biting this pawn on a6 not really exerting any pressure on the a-file. So let's move this one rook over here and have both rooks right in the center. And then if you want to play something f4, e5 later, then this rook is also well placed. All right, so queen c7 here, since my knight is pinned, I want to support my pawn. What else could I have done? Yeah. Um, your knight is not pinned, really. You could move this knight if you wanted to. Um, of course, you have to watch out for moves like e5. That's true. That's true. You're making a good point here. And if knight d5, I guess black could indeed take on d4 here and take on c2. That might be quite possible for black. So... Let's have a look. What could you do in this position? Rook d2. Yeah, or maybe rook a c1. Because one plan could be to play knight d5, which forced an exchange pretty much. Let's say black plays a move. He played in the game, rook f d8, now knight d5, forcing an exchange and then follow up with c4 and just having this nice center. And it's important to have the rook on c1 so you can Still after b5, play c4. You have to support on the c file. All right. So maybe rook ac1 would have been a little bit more harmonious, especially since still this rook, I feel like it's not doing enough good work on the a1 square. All right, let's see. Rook d2, rook fd8, f4, e5, knight f3, bishop c6. All right, 
And now you're asking, how should I deal with the pressure on E4? Well, right now, it's all good. You got the pawn protected. Nothing is threatening right now. So you don't have to worry about it right now. And you can focus on your own pressure. Uh, just play rook ad1. And threaten to take on e5, followed by queen takes d8. Nothing wrong with that. So, of course, you want to always check what your opponent's doing and if there are any threats in the position. But if there are no threats, then focus on your own play. That's also quite important. So queen c4, I'm not sure where you're going with this. I think the queen was well placed on, um, on d3. And here already I would, be, I would be afraid of moves like knight takes e4, honestly, and this could already work. The pawn is knight takes e4, d5. And um, yeah, this just looks like it's perfectly working for, for black already. So with queen c4, you just ask, you're just asking for trouble. The queen is not, shouldn't be there, let's put it like that. You also put yourself in the c file, the black queen just needs to move away and then already some discovered attacks are threatening. So. Don't put a queen on uh, c4 or in general, don't put a queen in places where it can be quite easily attacked, right? d3 was perfectly fine. Bishop h6. Yeah, this is another problem, right? Now the bishop on e3 is unprotected and you get, you're having some issues here. And you need to make awkward moves like queen b4. Yeah. This is a little bit uncomfortable already and this pawn f4 is also hanging, but your opponent is not taking it. Ah, because of bishop b6, good point, but the opponent could have probably taken with the bishop on f4. Anyways, we're not focusing on black here, we're focusing on white. Rook ad1. Okay. Takes f4. Bishop b6, rook e8. Rook takes d6. And this looks like a mistake here because you're running into this pin which you probably missed. So here you need to take with the queen on d6. But even this, this is, uh, this is also quite bad for white already. But the whole position was bad already. I think it all started to go downhill with queen c4. Um, in general, a really good rule of thumb is don't play unnatural moves. Um, I see it again and again also in my own practice. I sometimes like to play artificial and like to play a little bit fancy maybe or different, but oftentimes the simple moves, the natural moves, and most of the time are the best ones. So here, like I said, rook 81 instead would have been a natural simple move and would have been a good move, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, it seems like there's not much to do here, honestly. Okay, you're missing this bishop f8 move, but even if you didn't, I think your position would have been beyond repair. And now I think it's just all over pretty quickly. Down an exchange on bishop e7 now, picking up the queen here because after queen f4, there's rook e1 check. All right. Yeah, I think you were doing fine. I mean, the opening a little, well, hiccup, inaccuracy, let's put it like this. And then you were doing okay, maybe not an advantage for white, but position was roughly equal. But then this maneuver, queen c4, queen b4, it just left your position unstable and black was able to exploit that and um, won a pawn. And then you missed this tactic. Of course, tactics training is so important. I always like to emphasize that we have a tactic trainer here on Chess24, which you can use as much as you want if you're a premium member. So take advantage of that. Just even if it's just five or 10 exercises a day, keep your brain fresh and this will help tremendously in avoiding any kind of simple tactics like the one we saw in this game. Um, so this, is, this would be a great benefit. All right. Let's go to the next game, I would say, and I'm happy how quick I am today. Uh, so far, pretty quick, but uh, I, um, 
I'm kind of more used to this show already and now I'm also more focused on going through the games a little bit quicker because I know how many people send me games and how many people would like me to take a look and of course I can never get to all of them but I'm really trying to get to a lot of them. So let's keep going guys. Let me just drink something before my mouth dries up. All right, with a game by Krapa54. That was a play zone game, I assume. No comments, so let's move quickly. And general, as a quick note here, I always like comments because this will help me to, to really look at the critical moments, to identify the critical moments. And this can help me to really give you better feedback. So please, if you submit your, submit your games, please write comments important. All right, let's go through this. So this is the English opening. White is winning back to pawn on c4. Knight c3, bishop e6, queen a4. So this reverse Sicilian obviously. Uh, not much happening here. b5, okay, queen c2. We're looking for the white player here. Um, at this point, probably I would take on f6. Um, I would take on f6 here. Because you can just weaken the black king for free, create a double pawn, and also you can follow up immediately with knight e4. And um, also targeting another weak square. So for one, you have this weak square, and then you also target um, the weak pawn structure in front of the king. So this is good stuff. Um, so if you have this chance to, to weaken your opponent's king, go for it. I mean, of course, we like our bishops, but sometimes it's worth to give a bishop up, and I think this was the case here. And um, probably black would play bishop e7. Now you go knight c5 forcing the exchange of bishops and um, if great play on a C file, this is all this is all good for white. So general rule of thumb, if you can weaken your opponent's king, do it. Rook a c1. Also this move of course putting a rook on the half open C file, knight d4. And now once again go for it. Now, even more so, even more so, because now we're creating also, of course, the weakness, but the pawns are even isolated. Beforehand with the pawn e5, at least this was one pawn chain. But now, look at all these isolated pawns. This is just terrible. Um, and now you play knight e4, and once again, you can exchange a bishop on c5, and you just have very comfortable play here against the black pawns. All right. Whereas now you don't have anything really. I would even prefer black because black has more space. F5. This is a weakness. But okay. Well, black has more space, so he can go for that. And he's pushing your bishops back here on c5. Yeah, black's really comfortable now because you're pushed back. And where are you going to play now? It's not that clear. A3. So you want to probably go b4, but hmm, I think you need to do something here in the center um, by playing e3. Because you somehow need to get more space. Otherwise, I think this is what happening and this is what's happening in the game. Black's just going to um, cramp you in with his pawns. So we want to avoid that and we couldn't we can do this by probably playing e3 here. Um, yeah, I was looking at c4 now, point being that after e takes d4, there's c takes d3, and now queen takes d3, bishop c4. But even this we can discuss. Uh, rook takes c4, now rook takes c4, bishop d5 check, so b takes c4, and now still bishop d5 check, king h8, and bishop takes c4. And... Um, this might be completely fine, actually. You can secure the bishop with b3. You have two pawns for the for the rook, uh, for the exchange, excuse me. 
And you have the bishop here, which is always a nice thing to have. So I think something along the lines of e3, because a3 and b4, well, b4 is not even a threat because black can just play c4 himself. So a3 is not doing anything. You really um, are not improving your position. This is always something you want to keep in mind when you're playing. How can I improve my position? Right? What can I do? So c4 takes, takes, or bishop takes. Well, I would have expected pawn takes, but all right. Queen d1. Queen d1. Yeah, you had to protect the pawn on e2, I understand. Yeah. I'm wondering, you, you see I'm hesitating. Of course, I always have to calculate and check lines, but I like bishop b4 better. To create some space, it seems like you don't have a lot of space and we would like to have the square on d2 for the queen. Um, somehow I like bishop b4 better and I had to calculate some moves here, um, namely bishop takes b4, takes and d3, which is a critical line to calculate. Um, you have to take, bishop takes, and now queen b3 check Looks like first white is escaping, but now bishop c4, and here I had to check that white has queen d1 to save himself. And this should be okay. Yes, this is okay because after queen e7, there's bishop d5 check, and I know we're going way too far here, but sometimes you have to calculate a little bit longer. So I would have liked bishop b4 a little bit better here to create space for the queen. All right, queen d1, rook f8. Rook e1, queen e6, yeah, and this is what I'm talking about now, right? This is just not enough space for the white pieces here. e3, of course there was also bishop b3 now as a threat, which is a problem, winning the queen more or less. It is winning the queen, so e3 was necessary, but maybe, maybe not e3, maybe e4. Maybe e4, yes. Uh, but maybe it doesn't make a big difference. Even here, black suddenly have some, has a very strong pass pawn on the default. Um, so, yeah, it's not looking too great for black, uh, for white right here. Bishop b3, queen f3, and now d3, or queen h5, excuse me. Yeah, this is uncomfortable. And honestly, I think it all originated when you play queen d1, when you play passively, and allowed black to put on more pressure and um, now black is definitely in a good position. So what's happening here? Rook takes c1. Rook takes c1 and rook f8. Hmm. Okay, now bishop f4 is dropping the, the b2 pawn. And I'm wondering how bad your position is here, maybe. Maybe it is not that bad after bishop c3, in fact. Um, maybe it is not that bad. But still, a pawn on d3 is, of course, worrying me quite a lot. But after queen takes f5, you have queen takes f5, rook takes f5, bishop e4. And this is solving all the problems with the double attack. Let's mark this with the green arrows. And um, this is just winning the pawn on d3. So, and what else can black do after bishop c3, queen e2 I was thinking about, but here queen g6 looks incredibly annoying for, for black, hitting both the bishop on d6. Let's use blue arrows this time, maybe those are also a little bit more visible, and the pawn on g7, threatening checkmate. So this was indeed a critical moment. You spent one minute here, but 
you chose the wrong move, bishop f4, and then it was over pretty quickly. Queen takes b2, threatening d2, and uh, rook e1. Now d2 would have been possible if your opponent played bishop c5, which is also quite good. Bishop e3, d2, and you lost on time, but the position is also gone. All right, so yeah, here was a critical moment. Bishop c3 instead, and you are doing okay, I think. Yeah, I think you're doing okay, definitely. All right, so what was going on in this game? I think the critical moments were early when you had the chance to destroy the black pawn structure on two occasions, and that would have been magnificent, just give you a risk-free advantage to play for win. So I'm sure, in case you're watching, in the future, you will take advantage of this of these opportunities if they arise again. All right, let's go to the next game. And also let's see how people are doing in the chat. And Mac is explaining how to put in comments to the variations to the games, and I can also go over this in just a moment. All right, we're going to continue with a game by... Hold on, guys. Just needs to load real quick. Mm -hmm. Not loading so far. Ambitious Pawn is enjoying the show. That's good to hear. Thank you very much. And I hope we can continue in just a second. Let me reload. Oh, there it is. That took a little bit. All right. All right. And it's the game DDLJ81. And he's playing with the white pieces. So let's go through it. What's going on here? It's a Sicilian, the Kalashnikov variation. And here, here black should play a6, just for those of you who want to know, you can also use the opening explorer once again. We see it quite clear, 7,000 games a6, knight f6, just 200 games, and also scores quite convincingly for white here, 46% of the games are won by white, so that's fairly decent percentage. Um, so knight f6 is a mistake because now suddenly the, the knight pawn, the white pawn, the white knights, I should say, are already threatening stuff. And bishop e7. And here you played knight d5, but instead just open up, just open this up here. And knight d5, look at that. Beautiful knights. Let's mark them green, threatening stuff. This is already quite quite annoying for for black probably has to castle here but this is not not nice yeah so in this opening it's all about the square d5 who can fight for the square on d5 and if you can install a knight on d5 in this line in these lines and immediately threaten stuff as well as we saw right here then that's a good thing um, in general you what you don't want to do what happened here in this game um, is to, well, give up the, the square. Now you have given it up. This this nice square on d5 plus also, we shouldn't, rem we shouldn't forget the weakness on d6, uh, which is often a target as well, is gone, right? Um, so that's not good. We want to keep the weaknesses. All right, 
Anyway, now it's getting a little bit tactical. Your opponent took on g5, which probably wasn't, wasn't necessary. Knight b8 uh, was also fine, I think. But took on g5, takes c6, takes, knight takes d6, check. King f8. King e7 looks also quite decent for me, but anyways, knight e4, and we reach this position, bishop e7. Yeah, and you don't have much in this endgame, I would say. Maybe a tiny bit of an advantage because black still needs to settle his pieces, but not much, probably. Well, knight d6 is a little bit of a threat, potentially. Okay, let's just see how it Here, a little tactical trick, knight c5. Um, cannot be taken because of rook d8 check. But I wonder how useful this really is. And I, I think maybe it is not that useful. Well, it's interesting. But the alternative here was certainly knight d6. Threatening knight f7, which is quite a decent threat. And um, threatening the rook as well as the pawn on e5. Which... Well, if it forces black to take, then we're quite happy, right? We activate our rook, we split the bishop pair of our opponents, so that's great. And we can play against these pawns, and black is still underdeveloped. So this is great. Um, this is quite good for white. If black doesn't take, well, what can black do? I mean, even if you look at a move like bishop f6 to defend this pawn on e5, uh, still knight f7, rook g8, and now a little fancy move here, knight d8. Um, this is looking great for, for white, or even if you want to play even a little bit better, knight takes e5, tactics are already possible. So this is all good. So I think you got maybe a little bit blinded here by this going for this tactical trick, even though it didn't do much. So this is something actually that happens quite a lot. If we see a nice move, and let's see if I've, it is a nice move, right? Making use of the fact black cannot take. We like to play it just because it's nice, but you gotta make sure it's nice and good, not only nice. Yeah? And here it seems like knight c5 is just nice. So knight d6 was the normal move and the good move. And that's something I already talked before earlier, sometimes, the normal natural moves are just the best ones and we should just play them. All right, let's keep going. G6, now knight e6, you also split the bishop pair here. Um, actually, there was a better way to split it, I think, by going knight d7, because here black also has to take, otherwise you take an e5, and then you get your rook in immediately, and that's quite nice, because now black cannot move the king away from the seventh rank, and in fact, I might have to revisit my statement uh, that knight c5 was only nice and not good. Probably was also good because this knight d7 is looking quite good. Which move is better of the two, knight d6 or knight c5? I would still say knight d6, but this is also pretty nice because black has huge issues here to finish his development or to get the king off the a rank. All right, but after knight e6, now black can play king g7 and that's unfortunate now you castle here i think you could have occupied a seven frank and retreat with the bishop actually it doesn't do much rook d8 yeah there's nothing here to do this is just looking equal so yeah the advantage is gone uh, we have different colored bishops on the board. Um, yeah. Sometimes, if you don't make use of the initiative, in this case, white had a lead in development, um, then suddenly it's equal. So you really have to be careful to play precise moves if you have this initiative. This is, I think, the takeaway from this phase of the game. Let's keep going, king f6, bishop d7. 
c5, c4. Yeah. I don't think c4 is necessary here. Um, I think I would go for something like maybe rook d5. Because we're not sure yet where we're going to place our pawns. And c4 is a very um, committing move, right? You kind of move this pawn back. It's going to be on c4 and you give up control also over the square on d4. So be careful of pawn moves in general. You cannot take them back. And especially in positions with different colored bishops, sometimes of course you want to support your own bishop and put the pawn on a light square. But if you don't need to do it, then in many cases it also makes sense to put the pawn on the same color as the bishop of your opponent to restrict this bishop to take squares away from this bishop. And sometimes it just makes a lot of sense to stay flexible and delay this decision to later. Here, rook d5, I think, make, makes more sense, even though the position is about equal anyways. And also c4 doesn't change that, but just as a principle. Now you bring the bishop to d5. Of course, the bishop or the rook um, is looking nice there, but they're not doing much. And here you take him with the pawn. Yeah. Probably doesn't matter. Both positions are equal. Even though I would prefer black here, right? And you're writing here, I thought white was better. I was dreaming about pushing d6 at some point. How do you want push? How do you want to push d6 if there is a bishop on d6, for example? This is going to be very difficult. Um, and it's just going to remain a dream here. Um, black, I would prefer black here, honestly. Black is more active with the king, can play e4, king e5, uh, has the b-file to, to work with. Um, I would prefer black here already, and I think you should have taken with the bishop here. But even then I would prefer black, because black is more active and has, uh, can play e4, king e5, but it should be equal. All right, let's see how this continued. b8, b3, bishop b4. Now you realize black could be better due to the active rook. And yes, that's true. g3. Well, I would stop here black from further activating the rook, right? Rook d1. Of course, now we would need to check what to think of this position. And if we can take on d4 here, and this is probably possible because of f3 here. And, um, yeah, but still, still I'm not sure. This is already more complicated than ever should have been, right? From the position we saw earlier. But well, once we have the position, we have to deal with it. Um, okay, you're playing g3. Yeah, rook d1, rook d4, I'm not sure about. Could be that it's a draw, but still have to be accurate. g3, rook d4, and f4, well, this you shouldn't do. Uh, I have to be very plain here. Um, don't give your opponent for free a protected pass pawn, and this is what you're doing here, right? Um, you just, for free, just giving your opponent this protected pass pawn, allowing him to push by with e4, and also weakening your second rank. So, um, this is not good. <laughs> Instead, well, the position is probably not easy to play, but... Um, Yeah, especially as rook d2 is, of course, annoying. Yeah, I don't know, really. You, you need to be passive here in some way or the other. 
Uh, not pleasant, not pleasant certainly, but I know F4 is not the right way to go. Probably something similar like A3, then Rook D2, and um, maybe just to move like Rook B1. I know it's ugly, and I know this is going to be uncomfortable. And honestly, it could be that you're in big trouble already. I wouldn't be surprised. Black has very clear way to play. King E5, bring the king closer, activate the king. Sometimes the idea is to C4, Bishop C5. Uh, Black's just so active and. All your pieces are pretty much not doing anything, so this is bad news. So really, probably to stop all of that, you needed to go into this rook d1 uh, instead of g3 to stop black from activating the king at uh, the rook. Or maybe. Maybe he, no, rook d1 doesn't work because rook takes b2, d6 still. Oh, it does work because black cannot take on d6 because rook takes d6 check and rook returns to d1. So that could have, could have worked. And at least here, at least here you have this nice pass pawn. But even this looks bad actually, never mind. <clears throat> you probably had to go for rook d1 here and try to hold this position because here what happened in the game this just looks like there's no salvation really uh, maybe a computer could still find ways to hold it but as a human no and um, yeah here already i think it's very very difficult bishop c5 and rook takes c4 Looking for mating ideas with bishop e8. Okay, well, this is often a, a typical idea in these kind of positions with different colored bishops. Check. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Rook takes a2 simply and bishop e8 is bishop e7. That's unfortunate, but well, there was nothing you could do anyways. Except for maybe here not play rook b7, if I think about it. Probably remain passive and hope for the best. Yeah, I think you still have some re defensive chances here to hold this even though it's not gonna be easy. It's not going to be easy. But yeah, after you lose the A pawn, it's looking pretty dark. D6, E3, wow. Nice tactic by your opponent here, yeah. So let's see here, you're putting some computer analysis, e2, but, oh, rook b1, of course. Oh, so this is winning, or what? Winning for white suddenly. Probably your opponent only checked rook e6 here when black can play rook a1, follow with e1 queen, and wins for black. Probably should win, yeah. Or rook a1 check and then e2, but here bishop b5, e1 queen. This is fantastic, guys. This, this is still working out for white because the bishop is protecting a checkmate on f1. And no checks for black, really, just one check. On the second rank, the king escapes to h3, and white is winning. Wow. Crazy stuff here, crazy, crazy turnaround. Um, 
surprisingly by your opponent here was not necessary to go for this probably no rook b7 e2 check king f8 but now wait hold on king g1 but king g1 also loses yeah But here, just take the pawn. Take this pawn. And you might still... Yeah, this is probably also... Is this lost? I'm not even sure. Can white, can black win this pawn on d7? Maybe not. Maybe it is a draw. So take the pawn. Take the pawn here. Self bishop c6, and but you said you were running out of time already anyway, so it probably didn't matter. But um, yeah, in general, take the pawn. <laughs> All right. Quite an exciting finish, but I think you made your life much more difficult than it had to be if you played a little bit more precise in a critical phase after queens get off. The board and then you had the lead in development so you could have made use of that but instead you went into this different color bishop or different colored rooks and bishop end game and uh, there it seemed you mis the position a little bit and um, something that people always think which is not true different colored bishops doesn't automatically mean doesn't automatically mean that the, the game is going to be drawn. And uh, certainly that was not the case here either. Oftentimes, really, different color bishops, if rooks are on the board, that's the, that's the main point. Without rooks, okay, oftentimes it's a draw, but with rooks on the board, there's still a lot of potential because there are checkmating attacks. You can play on one color of the board, you have kind of the superior, superiority, right? Because the bishop doesn't have a counterpart, so you can do a lot. Um, but usually it's like different colored bishops, it's a draw. Well, that's not the case. All right. And I'm reading some shows. Yeah, take the pawn is a classic, of course. I should have young. Uh, here with me so you could always say those phrases and similar ones but let's keep going uh, we have some more games to cover and we're about one hour in so about one half an hour left and I need to drink something because I notice I'm getting a little bit slower and getting a little bit tired so my energy levels seems to be not as high as at the beginning of the show, but we'll get through it. All right, let's go to the next game, gentlemen. <laughs> we have a game by the Terminator. Let's switch back here and Terminator is saying in German thanks for the time that you're taking in this game I was white playing against playing uh, against 1975 just referring to ELO rating I assume or maybe German rating I had a winning position but I didn't have enough time to evaluate um, to finish the game and then I mis -evaluated the pawned game. So let's get into it, guys. Let's go through it. We have the Nimtsu Indian. What was he saying he was playing with the white piece or with the black piece? Yes, he was playing with the white piece. All right. Check. Knight bd2, c5, e3. 
Castle. Tack, tack. Tack, tack, tack. D5. Rook to C1. Knight BD7. Here you thought for a long time. Bishop d3, h6, and now you're asking 144 on the clock against 158. Um, is this referring to... Okay, this was a classical game. And you're saying, I felt quite insecure about that. Uh, what would you do about it? Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, you can spend more time in the opening uh, if it's important, right? Sometimes it is important and, well, of course, sometimes your oppo opponent is going to have more time. That's just how it is. Um, so don't think about it. Just play a little bit quicker. I like to have more time than my opponent, but sometimes you just need to invest the time. It's important to make good moves rather than have enough time and have a losing position, right? So don't think about it. Just ignore it. And if that's something of uh, your concern that you're spending too much time, well, one technique is to always write down your time um, probably that's what you did here, otherwise you wouldn't know that you had the time on the clock. But this just make, helps you to make to become aware of where you're spending your time. And for example, in this case, uh, you said here you spent a lot of time. What were you thinking about for so long? I think should be pretty clear that this bishop has to move. You have to finish your development. Also, I mean, I don't know if rook c1 is theory here. And in fact, this tree can help me. No, this position was played very rarely, if at all, and just three times according to this database. Yeah. Um, he already, I think, would have made more sense to develop this bishop. Uh, common rule of thumb, just real brief for all of those watching. Before you play any other moves, make sure you develop your king. Just castle, first of all, and then you can always think about moves like rook c1, unless there's some necessity. Of course, to all these rules of thumb, uh, bring out your minor pieces, castle first, then connect your rooks, blah, blah, blah. There are always exceptions, but most of the time those rules really do apply and you can just follow them. That makes it easy, right? If you just follow them, you say, okay, let me develop my bishop first of all, and then I can still think about what I'm going to do next. Castle and then keep on going. Makes it easier and you don't spend that much time in the opening because really you probably will need that time later on. Bishop d3, h6, castle. You know what I was wondering about the whole time? Now your opponent play, plays d takes c4. Maybe it makes sense for you to go c5 here. And uh, I mean, I'm the grandmaster, I'm still, I'm not sure. But here, uh, this looks like a decent decision, obviously, to to win some to gain some space on the queen side um looks very sensible to me especially because this knight looks a little bit strange and on d7 should be on c6 rather so either here or well after rook c1 yeah here maybe here c5 now maybe not here c5 because here rook e8 followed by e5 well even this you could deal with probably. Takes, knight takes, castle. I mean, you have the bishop pair. Of course, you want to have an open position, but at the same time, I like the c5 move. Just something to think about. I'm not sure if it's better or worse. Well, probably not worse what would happen in a game, but certainly an alternative. Bishop takes c4, knight b6. Bishop a2, knight bd5. I think why I want to play c5 is because in general I don't like these positions with the isolated pawn on d4. I never get it on the board, so I'm not very familiar with it. But here I would say you're doing quite well. And I would just play knight e5 probably immediately and put a queen on f3. Play actively, put a knight on e5. What is black going to do? Black still needs to develop his pieces. Bishop d7 most likely. And then you can play queen f3. And also there's a weakness here. It's nice to see. Every pawn move is potentially a weakness. I repeat this statement. Every pawn move creates weaknesses. Let's phrase it like that. And in this case, a pawn move in front of the king creates some weaknesses. You can bring the bishop to b1 and then maybe queen d3. Maybe some stuff's going on here, just saying. 
Um, this looks a little bit better. This setup it looks more active, putting up some more pressure on the black position. I like it better. I really do. Okay, queen e2, queen b6, now b4. Okay, b4, bishop d7, rook c5, okay, rook fc8. Knight e5, you say, you're saying here I thought about for about 20 minutes, what is my plan? Um, 20 minutes is already a lot of time. I don't think you need to invest that much time here. Knight e5 is a good move, nothing wrong with that. Another natural move would have to would have been to play rook fc1. And that's actually something I really want to point out in general. Sometimes people spend too much time in the wrong positions. Um, this is a position where you don't need to spend that much time. There's not that much to calculate. Of course, you can think about your plan, but you can also think about your plan while it's your opponent's move. Uh, I think it was either Kotov or Botvinnik. He said, when it's your move, think about concrete ideas, tactical operations. Make sure you don't miss any tactics and think concretely. When it's your opponent's move, think strategically. Think about your long-term plans, your ideas, where you want to maneuver your pieces. I don't always follow that, obviously, but maybe this is something helpful for you. Um, but what I really want to say is that in some positions, you can just make a move and it won't make a big difference. And this is one of them, rook fc1 or knight e5, both perfectly fine. And you don't need to spend those 20 minutes here. You can spend them in a position where there's a lot of to calculate and where you really need the time. So this is what I would say about that. Knight e5, bishop e8. Here, rook fc1 just seems so obvious to me. Just, just asking questions. What are you going to do about this rook on c8? Are you going to give up the c file? Are you going to play queen d8 back? I'm just curious. I just, I would be just curious to know. Probably queen d8 would be best because rook takes c5 really is not what black wants to do. If they d takes c5, you have a nice. Um, queenside pawn chain here, b5, c6, might fall in the future. You have the bishop pair, this is beautiful. So bishop b1 instead, a6, now rook fc1, rook d8, black gives up the c file, okay, good. Queen d3, king f8, f4. Should I attack further on the queen side or on the king side? What's the plan? The plan is to dominate, to control the whole board. And I think you're doing a good job here. So let's see how can you improve if you're already in quite a dominant position. You have control over the C file. So what's next? You, you're playing F4. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, this looks fine to me, honestly, f4. Maybe, maybe even h4. Maybe h4 preparing g4, g5, something along those lines. Because really, you have a lot of control here. And h4 is not weakening pos your position too much, just preparing this further advanced g4, g5. And um, what is black going to do? What is black going to do? I mean, this f4 move, I would rather like my pawn on f2 somehow because f4 really is weakening on this long diagonal, a7, g1. Hmm. I would rather keep the pawn on f2. Especially also because f4, f5 is not doing much, so you really want to do something. Of course, you could play f4, g4, g5, but then again, I would rather have it with h4. I'm trying to come up with other plans, but uh, it's not that simple, honestly. Once again, I'm not too familiar with all these isolated pawn structures. Um, 
But yeah, probably something like h4 and g4, g5 and go for it because yeah, you have a lot of control over position here. So you can you can open yourself up a little bit and you won't be punished immediately. All right, so f4, I don't like too much. It's weakening the position in the wrong ways. I would rather have gone with h4. Uh, this is open, this weakening this diagonal, weakening e3 square. And it just doesn't, the benefit risk ratio doesn't fit here. More risks than benefits. All right, let's keep going. Bishop b5, queen to h3. Um, okay, queen could have also been placed in f3, I think. Knight d7, queen h5. Okay, I'm looking at sacrifice already, of course, knight takes f7 and so on, of course. Those are always moves you want to check, but here doesn't look like it's going to work, but always worth checking, right? All right, queen h5, forcing the exchange here, and now f5, wow. But here I would be surprised if this doesn't work. Bishop takes h6. This is a move you want to look out for. And here, this must work. This is just, my intuition is timing immediately. This is crushing. Um, you're taking on h6, you're taking with check. And um, you can give another check. Or also, important detail, you can take on f5. And um, because of this pin, let's mark this. Yeah, this is this must fall apart. I am absolutely certain. I mean here, okay, I'm not sure about the specific line. Rook g8 is still possible. But even here, queen h7, this just this is falling apart. Um, this is just falling apart. Black cannot accept the sacrifice. Cannot. This and well, king e8 now, king e7, queen g7, even king e8. Uh, no, I cannot, I cannot believe that this works in any way for. For black, really. Well, actually, here, okay, maybe. Once again, we should take an f5. Okay, here I'm not completely convinced yet. Uh, maybe I am because... Okay, there's still some stuff to calculate, obviously, right? Um, but this is certainly something to check out. I, I kind of miss that rook c3 is not possible because always the knight just takes, but still this in conjunction with taking on f5 looks pretty strong. Certainly something to consider, right? All right, you took on f6, knight takes, queen g6, bishop e8. Hold on, hold on. I'm just ready to sacrifice. I mean, what's going on? I mean, now, Definitely works, that's for sure. Uh, this is just, this is just over. Um, it seems like, it seems like you didn't have this idea on your radar because you're not writing about either in the comments here, in the annotations to the game. So, oh. You guys can tell it's getting a little bit late. I'm missing the queen is hanging, so never mind. But um, bishop takes h6, an idea to consider if the queen is not hanging. Okay, let's keep going. Bishop e8, queen retreats, queen d6. And now queen takes d6 and you're saying, this was not good, was it? I didn't see how I could protect the pawn and I thought the attack was over. I was 
panicking. It's just a game. This is there's nothing to panic about. Uh, it's just a game of chess. Uh, nothing <laughs> too much at stake probably in this game. Um, so don't panic. Just try to find the best moves. And maybe it is the best move here to take on d6. Let's have a look. Of course, we want to keep the queens on the board if we want to attack, right? Um, and it could be even possible that you can sacrifice a pawn. But you don't need to do this necessarily. Um, one way would be... Hmm, let's see. How do you want to do this here? Yeah, maybe it is actually best just to go into the end game. I'm not seeing very promising alternatives. Maybe queen f2, queen takes d4, and bishop e3. This looks kind of smart. If there wasn't queen d1, unfortunately. Unfortunate. Anyways, I think it was fine to go into endgame and you're still better in this endgame, so what are you worrying about, right? Um, you still have the bishop pair, you still have control over c file. It's fine. Rook takes d6. But here. I wouldn't like to give black the time to put the knight back on d5 where it's so well placed um i would be tempted to just go rook c7 very tempted to go for this now rook takes d4 bishop c6 Bishop c6, there's probably bishop takes h6, g takes h6 and rook f1. And black cannot defend this knight, so that's good news. And the same is actually true, the more I think about it, after rook takes d4 as well. Look at this nice little combination uh, that is possible here. And that looks pretty decent. King g8 probably. Rook takes f6, rook d1. F1 takes, takes. Check bishop c6. Okay, well, I'm not sure how much this actually is, but certainly something to consider. Also, after rook takes d no, after, yeah, rook takes d4, you also have other options such as bishop c3 maybe. Rook d7 and then bishop takes f6, rook takes c7, rook takes c7, takes here, rook takes b7. Once again, I'm not sure how much this is, but hmm, interesting. But here bishop e3, knight d5, hmm. I mean, still, this is fine for you. More than fine, I would say. Um, but I would have liked to do something more forcing, especially considering that we have the bishop pair, right? So we want an open position. We want uh, the bishops to shine. So, um, I was hoping there was something better possible in rook c7. Seems to be a way to go. I'm not quite sure how good it is, but something to look into definitely. Knight d5, bishop f2, knight f4, king f1. Oh, bishop b5, watch out. We don't want to run into bishop b5 if we can avoid it. So let's avoid it uh, with rook e1, I would guess. 
a rookie five. One or the other. Let's say rookie one. And bishop b5. And we also don't want to allow knight d3. So, yeah, we probably have to go somewhere like rook c3. Oh, no, we shouldn't do this. Knight d2. But hold on, there's bishop g3 here. What am I talking about? Even this is not clear. Unfortunately. Okay, but king f1 obviously ran into bishop b5, and that's not good. Um, What about rook f1 here? No, it doesn't work either. Bishop b5? No, bishop b5 is rook b5. Yeah. Bishop e3. I'm picking up this knight. Even this is not clear yet, obviously. g3, rook takes a3. But it seems to be at least equal, at least. So maybe rook f1, maybe rook f1. But yeah, some other way than king f1, certainly. Now you probably missed bishop b5 here, and now, yeah, this is uh, definitely annoying, giving up this pawn. Rook c8. Bishop g3 is also moved to consider, by the way. Uh, point is after rook takes d4, there's a double attack. But black can just play g5, unfortunately. And uh, no follow up here. Okay. So rook c8. Now rook c5, I'm not sure what you're trying to do with rook c5. Maybe bishop e4 instead. Um, attacking this pawn, forcing knight d5. And now just take on d5 and rook c7, bishop c6, bishop g3. And I think you're on your way to draw this uh, position. Um, yeah, this would be a way to go, putting in bishop on e5. Black probably has to force rook exchange, rook d8, rook d7, and it's a draw. So being a pawn down, obviously, we want to head or steer towards a draw. All right, let's keep going. Rook c5. Bishop c6, bishop g3, knight d5, bishop g6. I mean, even being a pawn down here, you're not doing too badly because you have the bishop here, and it's quite difficult for black to convert. Rook c1, rook f8. And you're asking, how can I defend here? It was looking so hopeless, you're saying. But a computer is saying only minimal advantage for black. Well, because you have the bishops, never underestimate the bishop pair. I think that's a major takeaway from today's premium coaching. You have the bishop, that's awesome. So the bishops, so don't give them up, right? Uh, here playing king e1, I'm not sure where you're trying to go with this. Um, what can you do? Well, you just have to sit still, probably move like bishop e4 would be nice to just keep everything under control 
and um, Blunder Knight XP4. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate Knight XP4 is possible. Well then, something else. Of course, sitting still is not really one of human's greatest virtues uh, in general, but uh, in this case, you can just you just have to sit. Uh, just play move like rookie one, and if knight f4, like in the game, just move the bishop away. Don't give up your bishop here. That's, that's your ticket to a draw right now. Uh, your hope for a draw, so don't give it away. Um, and here after king e1, knight f4, uh, I don't know if you had to give your ticket away, but you did. Bishop takes f4. Um, probably should have retreated to b1. Keep the bishop here. That's probably clear by now, after I said a thousand times. Uh, but keep the bishop here. Okay? Uh, here, after bishop takes f4, rook takes f4, you resigned. Which is surprising to me because... You said that you misevaluated the pawn game, but I'm not seeing a pawn game. Uh, so either the game is cut off, or I don't know what's going on. Anyway, now it's not looking too great anymore because, well, I know how to put it, you don't have to bishop pair anymore. Um, so, yeah. Okay, still very instructive game. We learned something. I also learned something about the isolated pawn structure. And um, yeah, I think the turning point, the tipping point was where you asked, how should I continue here? And I think this whole move with f4, that was not the right way to go. I would rather aim for something with h4 followed by g4, g5. Um, this keeps your king in quite a safe place. And if black plays like he did in the game, bishop b5, then you go queen f3. And uh, here, also now, black cannot move this knight, and g4, g5 is a threat. I think black is in huge trouble here. All right, guys, it's 7.30. And I think ambitious pawn also understood what I meant, uh, that uh, I am a big fan of the bishop pair. All right, guys, I hope you could take something away for all of those guys that I analyzed the games today. Um, I hope it was helpful and thanks for sending in your games. I appreciate it. I have a lot more to cover. And in fact, I'm probably, no, not probably, I'm going to do another show on Monday. I want to cover some more games. So Monday, 5 p.m. And I hope to see you back here on Chess24 and... I will go over some more games. This is great stuff. I really like it and I hope you guys like it as well. So have a great weekend and maybe see you again on Monday. Goodbye.